it's because if we don't talk about it, it's going to happen more often and it's going to like happen regularly, which is going to help like more people. So talking about it is going to make it better. Because like it's important to support people who are living in poverty. Because like they may need an extra, or, like a little bit of more support with like the stuff that they're doing. So make sure to help them and talk about it. It's like a big issue because like there's like a lot of people in poverty and like the teachers don't really know people who's in poverty because like they could act different in school and then be like different in the house. I, mean, I think it's okay to talk about it because it's like it's the reality and like. If you've got a low income, you should like try and like get help if you can't like sustain for your family. Uh, people who are in the circumstance where they're living in poverty, I think that's a bit harsh for them to hear. They don't want to really take on that. Yeah, I am. I do live in poverty. In that aspect, yeah, of course, uh, addressing it as poverty is a social issue. I think if they were going to speak about it, they would be better off doing it in like some sort of like PSHE class where the kids, they can tell the kids about it and they can interact with the kids and get their feedback. Um, I think that's right. I think that's good because um, honestly, I don't think anyone should feel left out. Is the school doing anything to support the people of poverty that you know about? Um, I'm sure Mr McDonald's doing something because he's always interested in a lot of things. Uh, my name is Mordo McDonald, I'm one of the deputies at Bella Houston Academy in Glasgow. A few years ago I was down in the dinner hall uh, with one of our S1 boys and I was asking him why he wasn't having his usual roll and square sausage that he has at break time. And then he explained to me that if he had a roll and sausage at break time, he wouldn't have enough money on his free school meal cards for Friday fish and chips, which was something he very much looked forward to. But all day, until the fish and chips, the boy had nothing to eat and it got me thinking a little bit about his experience and my own lived experience. One of the first things we did in this school was take an audit of all the charges that we levy on families. So we looked at, for example, um, school trips, we looked at photographs, we looked at um, you know, the cost of a tie. These things may seem quite small to many people, but for some people, 20 pence is a lot at the end of the week. A pound is a great deal. And the idea that a school is the place where the child feels bad because they don't have the money, it's not the school I want to be in. It was because of experiences like these that I went to see some people at Glasgow City Council in August 2019 and asked if they could provide us with somebody that could help give parents and families advice on the benefits and entitlements that they could get. With help from the council, I met Sharon Graham, who works for a financial inclusion charity based in Easter House called GMAP. She became our financial inclusion support officer. She attended our parents' evenings. We published a booklet, which was uh, mailed to all the parents and carers of our children. And so far, £400,000 has been gained for our families. This is a staggering amount of money, especially during a pandemic. Last week I went around the catchment area of our school, uh, Govan, Pollock Shields, Moss Park, delivering desks. We had seen over pandemic time that many of the children had nowhere to study. They didn't have anything to lean on. They were doing their work from their bed. So we managed to get some funds and we went around with a minibus delivering desks. It's those kinds of things that make you realise that it's not all the same for every child in Scotland. And I think the pact and the work it's done over the last uh, few years has pointed a way in which schools can take on this work, develop it and make all Scottish children take advantage of the opportunities that they have. I've been very proud that the EIS Union has supported an initiative like PACT. I think it's opened my eyes and I think it's opened the eyes of many teachers across the country of the struggles that many families and children face on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the work that PACT has done has come at a very critical moment for Scotland. Post-pandemic Scotland, especially to do with education, has to look at families, has to look at communities. It can't just be to do with education, it should be to do with the conditions that families and children live in. The work that we've done here at Bella Houston, I think, shows the way in which schools could take on anti-poverty work and change people's lives for the better. 
I very much enjoyed working with Kate and Sandra. I think that what I needed was somebody that would give me a, a bit of a, a bigger idea of what I was doing. I, I was just trying to do things piecemeal here and there. And I think that by working with them, I've come up with more of a coherent strategy. And I think part of that will be a sort of policy, but not just a policy that sits on a shelf, but one that means that we work towards the goals of the policy whenever possible. I think far too often in education, we come up with policy documents, strategy documents, and that's all we do. We just tick off the list of things. I think with a project like this, we have to be continually trying to support our families in whichever way we can. And it's only made my belief stronger in the idea that we have to fight poverty. Without fighting poverty, we can't create a level playing field for children. I think that one of the sustainable things that PACT has done over the years is the CPD that has been offered to staff. I don't think all staff members know the difficulties that many families face. Uh, growing up in Mary Hill in Glasgow, where I did, I, I saw poverty, although I didn't understand it when I was a child. And I think that this lived experience uh, helps me day to day. But it's only when you really see and you talk about and you hear about the situations that many families are in that you, makes you realise that what could you do? What, maybe, maybe you're the adult that can make a difference.